we must admit, along the way, we have seen ample opportunity for improvement from the CDC all the way to the hospital. It's indefensible that one of Mr. Duncan's nurses was allowed to fly from Ohio to Dallas after she said that she had a low-grade fever. DSHS has, in fact, been asked by the CDC to monitor the 79 people in Texas who were on that plane with her. The eight individuals that were in closest proximity to her, within three feet, are under active monitoring with two temperature checks a day, including once face-to-face -face with our health care workers. The others are being monitored by phone. And that case brings up a good point. Air travel is, in fact, how this disease crosses borders. And it's certainly how it got to Texas in the first place. Based on recent and ongoing developments, I believe it is the right policy to ban air travel from countries that have been hit hardest by the Ebola outbreak. Certainly, there should be an exception for aid workers so that they continue their important work fighting this disease. And one of the things that I've asked the president to consider doing, he does have the authority to put a no-fly list uh, that the airlines then respect. And that is an option that I ask him to consider uh, to uh, clearly send the message. You know, it, it, it defies common sense from my perspective that someone who has been in close proximity or have treated these patients that they would go out and expose other people possibly to this, that they would travel out of state, that they would go on a cruise. Uh, but our focus right now is on the immediate uh, care, uh, the, uh, the immediate uh, implementation